Good morning, my dear students. I am teacher Alia Ashraf from Mansoura Royal School Science Department. Our session today is related to grade 4. We're going to continue unit 1, living things. Listen to the human respiratory system. First of all, I want all of you to take a deep breath and tell me what is the bath of air inside our body? What is the bath of air inside our body? For sure, all of you will say that the air will go to our lungs. The air will go to our lungs. This answer is true. But we will know the bath of air inside our body in details in our lesson. So be careful and let's start. The first question that I want to start our lesson with it is why we breathe we breathe to get oxygen and what is the main function of oxygen inside our body the main function of oxygen inside our body to burn the digested food that digested by the digestive system so why we need to burn the digested food to obtain energy to do the vital processes as ability to move and run and so on or uh, you can um, replace vital processes by uh, to uh, do the daily activities so we breathe oxygen to burn the digested food to obtain energy to do daily activities or the vital processes add the ability to move and run and so on okay so now we have a new definition which is the respiration process so what is the definition of respiration process it's the process by which the human gets energy from burning the digested food the process by which the human gets energy from burning the digested food. So, the respiration process can be described by this equation. I get oxygen and digested food. So, oxygen plus digested food will give us wastes, which are carbon dioxide and water vapor. And will get us it will give us energy okay so oxygen plus digested food give us carbon dioxide and water vapor and energy as we said last week the human body consists of systems that work together in full harmony so respiration process occurs to burn the food that related to the digestive system okay let's start by what is the importance of respiration process what is the importance of respiration process the first one to take oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide and water vapor number two to give us energy by burning the digested food to do vital activities as mush okay so while you do exercising you feel like you breathe so, so fast okay so the respiration process increases when your body becomes more active is that clear so now we will turn to another point which is the structure of the respiratory system Number 
number one, the nasal cavity or nose. Nose or nasal cavity. Number two, epiglutes. Epiglutes. Number three, pharynx. Pharynx. Number four, larynx. Larynx. Number five, trachea. 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 Number six, lungs. 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 Number seven, prunchi. Prunchi. We have two prunchi. Two prunchi. Number eight, bronchioles. 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 Number nine, alveoli. 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 Number ten, diaphragm. 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 As we said in our last online session, that most organ of digestive system exist in cavity, which is called abdominal cavity. And we said that the organs of respiratory system exist in cavity, which is called chest or thoracic cavity. So the organs of respiratory system exist in chest or thoracic cavity. Okay. Let's start by the first organ inside the respiratory system, the nose. The nose, it's the first organ of the respiratory system. It allows air to enter our body. So the air enter our body from nose. The air enter our body by or from nose, okay? So why we must breathe through nose not mouth why we must breathe through nose not mouth because our nose lined with three things the first one mucus layer mucus layer mucus layer and the second small hair small hair and the third the blood capillaries, blood capillaries, blood capillaries. So, the mucus layer, it's used to moisture the air before entering the too long. Moisture the air. Make the air wet, okay? And the small hair, it's used to filter the air from dust and microbes before entering the two lungs. And the blood capillaries is used to warm the air before entering the two lungs. So our nose lined with mucus layer that moisture the air, small hairs that filter the air from dust and microbes, and blood capillaries that warm the air before entering the two lungs. Okay, so we must breathe by nose, not mouth. The second organ, trachea or trachea, okay? Trachea is a tube supported with incomplete cartilaginous rings. Incomplete cartilaginous rings. Why this rings is incomplete? Because to make the trachea open all the time. So if I ask you, give reason, the trachea lined with or supported with incomplete cartilaginous rings, you will answer to make the trachea open all the time. Okay? And then the trachea lined with cilia. Cilia, it's like a small hairs that inside the cavity of trachea. Why? It's lined with this small hair which called cilia to eject up strange objects anything that enter trachea uh, that's not uh, considered as air will eject up as a strange objects okay so anything enter the air enter the trachea except air will be uh, removed or eject up by cilia at the bottom of trachea there are larynx and epiglutes 
at the bottom of trachea there are larynx which is called the voice box and epiglutes so at the bottom of trachea there are larynx which is called the voice box and epiglutes what is the function of epiglutes it's closed the trachea during the swallowing to prevent the food from entering the two lungs. Let's see it in this video. This is the food, the epiglutes. This is called epiglutes. Eject the trachea to prevent it from entering the trachea ejected the small piece of food to prevent it from entering the trachea and allow it to pass through the esophagus okay so the function of epiglutes close the trachea to prevent the food from entering it during swallowing and allow the food to pass uh, to pass in the esophagus at the bottom of trachea, trachea branched into two narrow tubes, which is called bronchi, bronchi, bronchi. So as you see in this picture, this is the trachea, okay? It's divided or branched into two narrow tubes. This is called bronchus, bronchus. And the two together called bronchi. So the two bronchi or one of them called bronchus. One of them called bronchus. Okay? Okay. So um, shortly we will repeat the trachea. Trachea is a tube that's supported with incomplete cartilaginous rings. Give reason to make it open all the time. Trachea lined with cilia give reason to eject up strange objects except air. At the top of trachea there are larynx and epiglutes. Larynx is the voice box and epiglutes its function to prevent the food from entering trachea by closing the trachea during swallowing. Okay, at the bottom of trachea, trachea is branched into two narrow tubes which are called two bronchi each one of them called bronchus okay and the two bronchi enter the two lungs what about the two lungs the two lungs exist in the chest cavity and they surrounded by the ribs or the rib cage okay Number two, each lung contains bronchus. Exactly. We said that in the last slide, the trachea branched into two narrow tubes, which are called the two bronchi. Two bronchi. Each one of them called bronchus. That entered one lung. So this bronchus will enter the left lung and this bronchus will enter the light the right lung okay so each bronchus enter one lung and each bronchus divided into small narrow tubes which is called bronchioles 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 Okay, each bronchiole ends with small sac or a small bag of air that called alveoli. That called alveoli. Okay, so the lungs contain the air sacs or air bags that called alveoli. What is the definition of alveoli? 
the alveoli is thin wall are surrounded by network of capillaries and where gas exchange occur. So what is the definition of alveoli? They are thin walls that surrounded by networks of capillaries in where gas exchange occurs. So again, the trachea divided into two narrow tubes, which are called bronchus. Okay, each bronchus enter one lung and divided into small narrow tubes, which are called bronchioles. And uh, each bronchiole end with alveoli, alveoli known as air sacs, because it's like a thin walls that's surrounded by a network of capillaries and where gas exchange occur. This is trachea. This is trachea. Trachea divided into two narrow tubes, which are called bronchi. Each one called a bronchus and enter one lung and then divide it into small tubes called bronchioles with green color. Okay, each bronchiole ends with air sacs, which are called alveoli. This is in this photo, this is the shape of alveoli. It's like the air sacs or air bags that connected to each other. Okay, this is the alveoli in which the gas exchange occur. What about the diaphragm? Diaphragm, it's take this curve or take this shape under the two lines. It's a very important muscle because it separates between the chest cavity, which is here, and the abdominal cavity, which is here, okay? So this is the chest cavity and this is the abdominal cavity. So the diaphragm separates between the chest and the abdominal cavity. What is the function of diaphragm? Diaphragm play an important role in respiration process or breathing process, especially in inhalation and exhalation process. We will know its function in the next slide in details. Now we will know the function of alveoli or the two lungs, which we said before, the gas exchange occur or take place in the alveoli, which is found inside the two lungs, okay? Let's talk about the mechanism of respiration to know the uh, main uh, rule or the main function of the diaphragm. We know that the respiration process classified into two small processes, which is inhalation and exhalation. What is the definition of inhalation? It is the process in which the air enters the two lungs. The process in which the air enters the two lungs. While the exhalation, it's the process in which the air leaves the two lungs. So the inhalation, the air enters the two lungs, while the exhalation, the air leaves the two lungs, okay? Now we will describe and explain the motion and or the movement of diaphragm and ribs and the thoracic cavity. The diaphragm muscle during inhalation will contracts and moves down. The diaphragm muscle during inhalation will contract and move down. 
while during exhalation will relax and move up why during inhalation we want to uh, get the air inside our lungs so we want that um, that we want uh, to make the size of the two lungs more big okay so the diaphragm muscle move down to give to the two lungs more space okay so it contract and move down while during exhalation we want to expel out the air we want to make the air leave our the two lungs so we need to minimize the space or the size of the two lungs so the diaphragm move up and relax to make the air leave the two lungs okay what about the movement of ribs during inhalation process the ribs rises up why it rises upwards why because the size of the two lungs become more big so the size of ribs so uh, sorry the ribs will uh, move upwards you can try it inside your home take a deep breath you will find the ribs rise upward and now expel out the air that you get you found the ribs move downwards okay what about the size of thoracic cavity during inhalation exactly the size will increase because the air enter the two lungs and during exhalation the size of thoracic cavity decrease because the air leaves the two lungs now we will describe exactly how the gas exchange occurs inside the two lungs especially in alveoli the gas exists in alveoli is oxygen okay as we breathe oxygen and the air pass the trachea and the two bronchi and reaches two bronchioles and finally it arrived to the alveoli so the oxygen is inside the alveoli as you see in this picture okay the oxygen is inside the alveoli and the carbon dioxide is outside the alveoli it's get uh, so, uh, sorry it's produced uh, by the burning of digested food at uh, the cells of the body okay so the carbon dioxide produced due to the burning of food inside the body cells while the oxygen exists inside the alveoli during inhalation process what will happen the alveoli contain thin walls as we said before in its definition this thin walls surrounded by blood capillaries okay so uh, through the, these blood capillaries the oxygen will go inside the uh, will go outside the alveoli and the carbon dioxide will go inside the alveoli okay i will say it again the blood which found inside the blood capillaries okay reaching carbon dioxide due to the burning of digested food inside the body cells while inside the alveoli there is oxygen what will happen the blood that found inside the blood capillaries will leave the carbon dioxide and put it inside the alveoli through the thin wall of the alveoli and the oxygen that found inside the alveoli will go outside 
to reach the blood which is found to blood capillaries and then what will happen the oxygen will go through blood inside the blood capillaries to all the body cells while the carbon dioxide will be, will uh, which is found the alveoli in this time will uh, expelled out through uh, passing by the bronchioles and then bronchus and then trachea and then the nasal cavity and we get it uh, get rid of the carbon dioxide by the exhalation process okay so finally the gas exchange occur inside the alveoli through the blood which is uh, found in blood capillaries that surrounded the uh, alveoli from outside the blood which is found the blood capillaries reaching carbon dioxide which uh, while the alveoli from inside reaching oxygen the oxygen will go outside and the uh, carbon dioxide will go inside the alveoli and the alveoli will get rid of them uh, during exhalation process and the oxygen which is found now inside the blood and blood capillaries will transfer to or will distribute it to the body cells okay the last point how to keep the respiratory system healthy first one don't be in crowded places don't be in crowded places Smoking destroys the respiratory system, so don't smoke. Number three, keeping of the severe cold. Keeping of the severe cold. Number four, breathe by nose, not mouth. Number five, having, having fruits rich in vitamin C, such as oranges, gaffe, to uh, provide uh, and protect yourself from diseases. Now we have reached to the end of our lesson. See you next time and goodbye.